everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is The Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks so much for being with us. Popular conservative icon Laura Ingraham has built a primetime TV career upholding family values, but yet remains unmarried at the age of 60. Her winding romantic history from a broken college engagement to high-profile romances has left some deep emotional marks on her life. Why did her marriage plans fail? Or was she forced to decline the possibility of marriage itself? What life events truly shaped this decision? Join us as we reveal why Laura Ingram chose to live her life alone. Why Laura Ingram has never been married. Laura Ingram stands out as one of America's most prominent conservative voices, having been outspoken on traditional family values. Yet the longtime host of the Ingram Angle has never walked down the wedding aisle herself. In a recent interview, the Fox News primetime star offered rare personal reflections that provide intriguing color into why she remains unwed at age 60, despite a winding romantic history stretching back to her 1980s Dartmouth undergrad days. Ingraham traces her single status back to early heartbreaks that left emotional marks, including a broken engagement to college boyfriend Dinesh D'Souza before distance untangled their young relationship as she left for law school. Later, while her media career took off in the late 1990s, Ingraham endured a difficult breakup with fellow MSNBC pundit Keith Olbermann due to general incompatibility beyond politics. Afterward, she had a short-lived fling with Congressman Robert Torricelli that reminded her that many suitors saw her primarily as a rising star rather than for herself. However, Ingraham's outlook on love and marriage shifted profoundly after she battled breast cancer in 2005, just months after accepting a marriage proposal from businessman James V. Reyes. Facing her mortality made Ingraham realize that her happiness and completeness come from within, not needing a husband to feel whole as a woman. Her grueling treatments and emotional recovery required focusing inward on self-care, leaving no effort for maintaining her engagement. She and Reyes compassionately parted ways so she could heal. Today, Ingram remains open to marriage, but feels she outgrew its traditional necessity long ago. She takes pride in living out her professional ambitions while raising children solo. Ingraham reflects that life panned out wonderfully without needing the perfect romance fantasy she dreamed of in her youth. God blessed her with so many joys already, she says. So if Ingraham meets someone truly incredible someday, she'll consider marrying again with open eyes. But for now, she relishes what she has built. Now, let us delve deeply into the details of her life that truly shaped her decision not to ever marry, from her family background to her career switch and other complexities. We will also talk about her political loyalties too. Stay tuned. Formative years and path to conservatism. Laura Ingraham spent her formative years in Glastonbury, Connecticut, under the roof of a modest middle-class family. The future conservative icon was born in 1963 as the third of four children to Anne and James Ingraham. Her father was an entrepreneur who ran a car wash business. Her mother was a waitress, but later became a real estate agent. Though the Ingrahams led a suburban middle-class lifestyle, young Laura saw her parents work incredibly hard to provide for the family. From them, she inherited a robust work ethic and tenacity that would pave the way for her future success. As a high school student in Glastonbury, Laura's eloquence and persuasive ability became evident. She took part in speech competitions and debates, honing her public speaking skills. Though Laura was sociable and popular at school, she also demonstrated a fiery spirit of independence. After finishing high school in 1981, Laura set off to attend Dartmouth College. The rigors of Dartmouth's Ivy League curriculum profoundly impacted the young Laura. Finding herself surrounded by mostly liberal professors and classmates, Laura's ideological beliefs steadily grew more conservative during her Dartmouth years. While studying English and Russian literature, Laura got involved with an on-campus newspaper called the Dartmouth Review. By her senior year, 
she became the newspaper's first female editor-in-chief. Under Laura's leadership, the Dartmouth Review developed a reputation for running provocative conservative stories that challenged Dartmouth's liberal establishment. Laura's tenure leading the newspaper proved controversial when she sent an undercover reporter to secretly record and publish private details about a meeting of Dartmouth's Gay Students Association. Though she viewed it as upholding freedom of the press, the act brought Laura widespread criticism from those supporting LGBTQ rights. Nonetheless, Laura emerged from Dartmouth in 1985 with her conservative perspectives emboldened, along with a bachelor's degree in literature. She had also found a passionate interest in the arena of media and commentary. After college, Laura set her sights on attending law school with dreams of becoming an attorney, prosecutor, or judge. She believed a law degree would help her best stand up for her conservative convictions. In 1987, Laura graduated with a Juris Doctor of Law degree from the University of Virginia School of Law, an elite institution regarded as a cradle of conservatism within the legal space. Beyond just studying complex legal theory, Laura spent her law school years forming consequential connections in the conservative legal community while understanding the inner workings of the judicial system. After finishing law school, she wasted no time embarking on an auspicious legal career. Laura's first job after law school came clerking for Judge Ralph K. Winter on the U.S. Court of Appeals Second Circuit in New York. Clerking for the respected Judge Winter provided Laura with intriguing first-hand experience in the appeals court's key role in shaping legal precedents. Her most career-defining job, though, came next in 1991, when she was chosen to clerk for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who had only recently joined the court. Working closely with Thomas gave Laura an invaluable look into how America's highest court weighs in on legal issues. Thomas's staunch conservatism also further influenced Laura's legal perspectives. By the mid-1990s, Laura chose to veer away from her legal career into a bold new direction, media commentary. She realized that a career in media would provide her with a more impactful platform to influence popular perspectives on critical policy issues she cared about. Laura started off working as a political commentator for MSNBC cable television in 1996. Her sharp wit and candid articulation of conservative views quickly made her a rising star pundit within the network. Then, in 1998, Laura took an even bigger leap by launching her own nationally syndicated radio program titled The Laura Ingraham Show. The fast-paced three-hour show aired across 300 domestic radio stations, allowing Laura to reach millions of American listeners daily. On the radio program, Laura sharply voiced her opinions on an array of political and cultural issues while also conducting interviews with influential figures from across the ideological spectrum. Laura's fiery brand of commentary resonated with many conservative listeners who felt their perspectives went unheard in much of the mainstream media. Over the years, The Laura Ingraham Show gradually became one of America's highest-rated talk radio programs. Laura's prominence as an articulate female conservative voice in a male-dominated industry continued to rise. But little did she know then that her most acclaimed chapter in media was still to come next, through primetime television. From a broken engagement to cancer battles and single motherhood, conservative icon Laura Ingraham's untraditional path to parenthood captivated politics watchers from all around the world. Keep watching. Winding journey of love, heartbreak, and family. Laura Ingram stood out even back in her college days for much beyond just her flourishing conservative commentary. The young Dartmouth student also turned heads for her active romantic life, filled with intellectual stimulation, yet plenty of heartbreaks. As an undergrad during the early 1980s, 20-year-old Laura met an intriguing love interest through her campus involvement with conservative publications a graduate student named Dinesh D'Souza. D'Souza, the India-born future political commentator, worked at Dartmouth Review newspaper along with Laura. The two young conservatives discovered much intellectual chemistry, 
and soon kindled a passionate college romance during Laura's sophomore year. Enamored by D'Souza's unique immigrant background influencing his conservative theories, Laura grew incredibly serious with her new beau. After two years of dating, she accepted D'Souza's marriage proposal just months before her 1985 graduation. However, with Laura set to attend law school miles away in Virginia, while D'Souza pursued his career, their engagement crumbled under the looming pressures of long distance coupled with their youth. The broken off engagement marked the dawn of an emerging pattern in Laura's love life, intense short-term relationships frequently doomed by poor timing. In the 1990s, as Laura's media career as a political commentator took off, she captivated headlines by dating fellow pundit Keith Olbermann in what seemed a high-profile media power couple pairing. While Laura rapidly gained fame for her arch-conservative bomb-throwing and witty rhetoric on MSNBC, Olbermann developed equal notoriety from the left. As they crossed paths often at the network, romantic sparks flew between the ideologically mismatched pair. From 1997 to 1998, their intriguing boyfriend-girlfriend relationship spawned plenty of gossip within Manhattan media circles. Some speculated if the unconventional romance could survive long-term, given Olbermann's unwavering liberalism clashing with Laura's rigid conservatism. The scrutiny proved premature, though, as mere months later, Laura and Keith split up amicably, citing general incompatibility beyond politics dooming their relationship. On the heels of her breakup with Olbermann, 39-year-old Laura became unexpectedly infatuated with a new paramour. Democratic Congressman Robert Torricelli from New Jersey, whom she first interviewed in early 1999. The handsome 51-year-old Torricelli, amid a divorce that year, grew mutually enchanted with the rising Republican media icon after several flirtatious encounters on Capitol Hill and glitzy DC galas. Tabloids soon photographed them canoodling during a whirlwind European vacation that summer, fueling rumors of wedding bells. The unlikely match between the liberal legislator and conservative commentator resulted in plenty of wagging tongues. But just as quickly as sparks flew between them, things fizzled out rapidly by 2000 as the unconventional couple discovered little long-term foundation beyond physical chemistry and social clout. Following the fleeting fling with Torricelli, Laura entered one of her most serious relationships to date when she fell for a successful Republican businessman named James V. Reyes. Reyes' low profile contrasting with Laura's growing media fame appeared an ideal match at first. After four years of dating, Laura happily accepted when James proposed to her in 2005, looking ahead to marriage. However, just months later, Devastating news turned Laura's world upside down when she was diagnosed with advanced breast cancer. With Laura needing urgent surgery and chemotherapy, the couple mutually ended their engagement so she could fully focus on her health, though James promised to stick by her side nonetheless. Overwhelmed battling a possible death sentence while seeing her marriage plans collapse, Laura undertook aggressive treatment to beat cancer with support from friends and family. After a double mastectomy and enduring months of exhausting radiation and chemotherapies, Laura was finally declared cancer-free in 2007. She credited her Christian faith for providing spiritual strength through the harrowing ordeal. The traumatic experience made Laura emerge wiser with an adjusted outlook no longer craving marriage. She decided to fulfill her motherhood ambitions nonetheless through adoption. In 2008, 45-year-old Laura took the momentous step into parenthood, one she postponed for years due to her career, by adopting a baby girl domestically named Maria Caroline. Fascinated by single motherhood, she expanded her family just a year later by adopting two more young children from Russia, a son named Michael and another daughter named Nikolai. As a high-powered media personality balancing the demands of work and raising three young kids alone, Laura acknowledged feeling overwhelmed at times, but thoroughly enjoyed motherhood's emotional rewards. She took six weeks maternity leave from her radio show after each adoption, 
then arranged a flexible schedule with assistance, helping raise her children when needed. Laura also published parenting advice books, sharing lessons from her experiences as a single working mom. Though Laura chose to adopt children internationally from Guatemala and Russia, she placed high emphasis on immersing them into American culture, from a young age stressing the importance of hard work and English fluency. Simultaneously, she made sure her kids learned about and connected with their cultural heritages through cuisine, language lessons, and family trips abroad. Laura displayed a thoughtful approach avoiding imposing just her conservative Western perspectives onto her children. Instead, she focused on exposing them to diverse ideas. Her daughter Maria showed athletic talents by playing tennis by the age of 12. Meanwhile, her son Michael took up hockey as a hobby. Laura ferried them enthusiastically to countless practices and tournaments as schedules allowed. Professionally, Laura often voiced her beliefs in the criticality of stable family structures for raising responsible future generations aligned with traditional values, views shaped by her own mothering journey's ups and downs. During the controversial Trump presidency years, Laura's eldest child, Maria, entered her teen years where she adopted more moderate social views than her staunchly conservative mother, leading to some debates at home. Unlike on TV, Laura avoided lecturing her daughter harshly for daring to disagree on issues like immigration or gun rights. While making clear her positions, Laura gave Maria space to voice opposing opinions respectfully. Later, when Maria came out to Laura as sexually fluid in 2021, Laura again responded with support instead of judgment. She emphasized the importance that her kids feel comfortable being themselves. Through all her peaks and valleys navigating careers, health crises, and motherhood, Laura valued family above all else. She often leaned on her parents, siblings, and later her children seeking grounding from her media world chaos. Laura always says that no matter how far you go career-wise, you can never forget where you came from, and the people who love you unconditionally, family is everything. When Laura Ingram brought her fiery conservative commentary to Fox News in 2017, critics called her divisive, while loyal fans crowned her a new right-wing hero, as controversies helped her quickly become a big name in primetime, fueling her meteoric rise. Storms into primetime television. After nearly 20 years of dominating talk radio airwaves, Laura Ingraham set her sights on expanding her media influence into American living rooms through a new endeavor, primetime cable news. For years, Laura mulled over transitioning her fiery conservative commentary from just radio waves to the impactful visual medium of television. And in 2017, at age 54, she finally got her big break entering the high-stakes world of primetime cable news punditry. That October, Fox News launched a brand new weeknight program titled The Ingraham Angle to be hosted by Laura herself. Fox granted her a coveted 10 p.m. time slot right after Sean Hannity's show, indicating her elevation into the top tier of conservative TV personalities. The Ingraham Angle premiered on October 30th, 2017, with Laura making her first appearance behind a sleek glass desk in Fox News, Washington, D.C. studio. She welcomed viewers by highlighting how her live program promises to deliver the real stories that you won't hear from the mainstream media. From the start, the angle established itself as a bastion for Laura's trademark direct, confrontational style blended with her legal experience an idealistic conservative analysis of current affairs. The show's launch drew strong curiosity, not just from Laura's established conservative radio fans, but also from critics skeptical of her combative reputation. Nonetheless, Fox demonstrated full confidence in their controversial new headliner to bolster their dominant primetime lineup. Liberal-leaning outlets like CNN and MSNBC critiqued Laura's on-air style as angrily divisive. Some expressed concern over her past insensitive racial comments, while others alleged the angle seems tailored to promote Donald Trump's agenda on Fox. 
Simultaneously, conservative sites like The Daily Caller lauded the show's debut for offering a new conservative female powerhouse on Fox, while candidates from across the Republican Party lined up eagerly to appear on the program. Amidst the ideological clash of reviews, Laura dismissed her critics by tweeting, The spirit of Stalin is alive and well in the American left, as they seek to silence anyone opposed to their totalitarian ways. She urged her supporters to stand strong in the face of liberal attempts to suppress conservative voices in the media. Controversies aside, from a business perspective, the Ingram angle witnessed promising early ratings indicating viewer curiosity towards Laura's primetime debut. The show attracted an average viewership of over 3 million over its inaugural week, including over half a million viewers in the key 25 to 54 demographic coveted by advertisers. The numbers marked a 16% increase compared to the same time slots average before Laura's arrival. Within just three nights on air, the powerhouse media analytics firm Nielsen officially ranked The Angle as a top five primetime cable news program, confirming Laura's ability to draw big audiences. Fox News executives expressed delight at their new headliner's stellar early returns. With strong initial ratings fueling her ambitious momentum, Laura proceeded full speed tackling numerous hot-button social and political issues on the angle. She doubled down on her past support for extreme immigration restrictions, proposing weekly segments like Reality Check on Immigration and How Safe is America that framed illegal immigrants as public safety threats. Laura also dedicated airtime rallying against NFL players protesting police brutality by kneeling during the national anthem, an issue that divided America. She contended it disrespects nationalistic traditions and the military. Her coverage seemed designed to appeal to the worries of older white conservatives concerned about America's changing identity due to immigration and civil rights activism. It strongly supported their traditional values Critics accused Laura of repeating white nationalist ideas by blaming immigrants and racial minorities, using selected alarming incidents to show America as becoming lawless. But Laura didn't soften her talk despite criticism. Instead, her primetime show gave her a bigger stage for stirring up new controversies. In spring 2018, Laura made national headlines for making fun of Parkland school shooting survivor David Hogg on Twitter for not getting into colleges. She later said sorry after people got mad about her attacking a teen who wanted gun reforms after seeing classmates killed. Months later, she caused more outrage by comparing detention centers for undocumented immigrant children separated from their parents to summer camps. Critics said she was making it seem okay what many saw as human rights abuses by the Trump administration. Despite strong reactions to her divisive views, Laura kept getting lots of support from her conservative fans who liked her bold honesty. By early 2019, the Ingram Angle had over 3 million viewers per episode. Laura enjoyed provoking liberal critics while calling herself the left's worst nightmare. But soon, Laura faced her first big problem when people started boycotting her show. Things got heated in March 2019 when Laura made fun of Parkland survivor David Hogg again for not getting into colleges. Angry about Laura making fun of teen victims of gun violence, Hogg asked his 700,000 plus Twitter followers to ask the Angle's advertisers to stop sponsoring until she says sorry. Over a dozen prominent advertisers soon fled the Angle caving into public pressure. With advertising revenues threatened, Fox News rebuked Laura's behavior Laura refused to apologize or tone down her talk to win back sponsors. Even though the angle lost money, Laura said the boycott was a plan to silence conservative voices. She thanked fans who started a counter boycott to support brands still sponsoring her show. This trouble was the first big challenge for Laura's primetime success, but she came out of it mostly okay by relying on her loyal conservative fans who didn't want her to be silenced. As Laura kept going, she focused more on President Donald Trump's actions and successes 
while strongly attacking his critics. No matter if it was about immigration, foreign policy, or the economy, the angle kept repeating what the White House said. Laura was very loyal to Trump, which some critics called blindly supporting, while she called herself a proud nationalist who backed Trump's America First idea. When Trump was accused of working with Russia, Laura agreed with Trump that it was a witch hunt. She also didn't accept the findings of the Mueller report that showed evidence of Trump trying to stop the investigation. When COVID-19 started, Laura at first said it wasn't as bad as Trump did. She even talked about treatments that weren't proven to work, just to criticize lockdowns. But after getting COVID herself, she changed how she talked about the virus. Even when Trump tried to overturn the election results, Laura defended him. When his supporters stormed the Capitol on January 6th, Laura kind of said it was wrong, but she kept talking about Trump's claims that the election was rigged. Now, as Laura Ingraham nears her sixth year on primetime, she's one of Fox's most famous faces and a big part of modern conservative media. Some people say the Ingraham angle is racist and spreads wrong information, but Laura's fans see her as a hero fighting against liberal media that hides the truth. She's proud that a lot of older white conservatives watch her show. As American politics gets more divided, Laura knows she can rally right-wing audiences by scaring them with what she says, even if it upsets liberals, and she's not slowing down. With conservative media mixing commentary and activism more in the Trump era, Laura seems set on pushing that line as far as it can go, no matter the controversies. Her spot in Fox's primetime lineup seems very safe. From college newspapers to primetime punditry, Laura Ingraham built a fiery career on controversies, outing campus groups, demonizing immigrants, and backing Trump no matter what. What else did she do? Lifetime of Controversies Before becoming a fiery cable news personality, Laura was an activist in college. While at Dartmouth College, she led the conservative newspaper, The Dartmouth Review. In 1984, Laura caused controversy by sending an undercover reporter to a private LGBTQ group meeting and then publishing transcripts without permission. She said she did it to defend freedom of the press, sparking a big debate about free speech versus privacy. The backlash from the mostly liberal campus made Laura defend herself in student hearings. She didn't back down, saying it's important to question powerful groups a trait that would shape her future battles with controversies. Immigration is a hot topic in America, and Laura has strong views on it. In the mid-2000s, she spoke out against George Bush's immigration reforms that aimed to give undocumented migrants a way to become legal residents by paying fines. Laura saw this as rewarding people who broke the law. When Donald Trump started his campaign in 2016, talking about Mexican immigrants as criminals, Laura supported him. She called for deporting all undocumented migrants and said comprehensive immigration reform ideas were dangerous for public safety and jobs. On her show, The Ingraham Angle, Laura often talks about immigrants negatively. She doesn't make distinctions between asylum seekers and economic migrants or between people who've been in the U.S. for a long time and those who just got here illegally. In her view, Anyone who enters the country unlawfully is dangerous and doesn't deserve sympathy. Laura's strong opinions often lead to accusations of fear-mongering and bigotry from immigration advocates and moderates. She dismisses critics as open border radicals who ignore the realities of unchecked migration. Her show's segments warning about immigrant crime and financial burdens attract a large audience. Critics say Laura uses subtle tactics to play on white fears about America's changing demographics, often highlighting crimes committed by people of color while downplaying violence from white individuals. Some accuse her of promoting white replacement theory, a xenophobic idea popular with the far right. In response to claims of racism, Laura insists she presents facts objectively and argues that discussing demographic changes is important for transparency. Despite losing advertisers over her rhetoric, she refuses to soften her language, 
seeing boycotts as proof that she challenges the liberal establishment's power to control certain discussions. Regardless of political fallout, Laura vows to keep addressing controversial issues like jobs, taxes, and security, while trusting her viewers to think critically. She also takes firm stances on LGBTQ issues, supporting religious freedom laws that allow businesses to refuse service to gay couples, and criticizing efforts to expand transgender healthcare access. This has drawn criticism from LGBTQ advocacy groups, but Laura sees herself as defending parental rights. Her unwavering support for President Trump has led her to dismiss allegations of Russian collusion and obstruction of justice as partisan attacks. She stands by Trump through various scandals, cultivating a close relationship with him and gaining rare access to his inner circles through her platform at Fox. In private meetings, Trump praised Laura for her TV commentaries and help with speech writing. He even gave her exclusive interviews for the Ingram angle, which boosted her ratings and influence among his supporters. In return, besides giving Trump favorable coverage, Laura offered him legal advice, ideas for speeches, and suggestions on messaging tactics. She became one of the most powerful female voices in the media supporting Trump's populist ideas. By aligning herself closely with Trumpism, Laura became a star in right-wing media. But now, with Trump out of office and facing backlash after the Capitol riot, Laura's facing a big challenge in her career. Can she stay relevant without Trump on social media and in power? How will she deal with rising Republican leaders like Ron DeSantis and Glenn Youngkin, who are distancing themselves from Trumpism? The brand of uncompromising conservatism she's built might be risky as GOP politics change. But one thing's for sure, controversy always seems to find Laura, and she doesn't seem to mind one bit. Like this video, and subscribe for more exciting videos. Also, drop your movie suggestions in the comments below.